planning on taking a cruise around the Norwegian fjords? Then stay tuned and check out this video because we're bringing to you our top tips to get the most from your sailing. Yeah. best time to cruise around the Norwegian fjords is in the summer months, generally between May to September because it tends to be a lot milder. If you're after that midnight sun experience though, the best times are May to July and above the Arctic Circle. A lot of people travel to Norway to try and catch those elusive northern lights. If that's what you're looking for, the best times to go are December and January when the nights are darkest and longest. Yes, and look out for those clear skies, and also, the further north you go, the more chance you have of seeing them. If you aim for ports in Tromso and Lofoten, you do have a much better chance. The key tip for that though is to look for smaller ships, because actually the big mega ships don't often go up that far north because they are too big. So if you look at some of the older ships, the smaller ones, that's your best bet for the Northern Lights. So if you're heading to Norway in search of some whales, then the best time would again be to visit during these summer months. June and July tend to be the prime time to see them. Yes, there are different kinds of species that you can see there. Are orcas, mink whales, humpbacks, and even occasionally sperm whales. One thing to bear in mind if you're traveling up to Norway is to pack appropriately. Norway is very well known for its changeable weather, even by UK standards. So pack for all seasons because even on one sailing, you're likely to experience at least three of them. Absolutely. And Norway is known for being cold, snowy, and sometimes very wet. But on the flip side, it can also get exceptionally warm. Last time we went on a Norwegian cruise, it was really warm, it was like 22 degrees? Yeah, yeah, mid 20s. Um, we actually burnt because we didn't bring sunscreen, so it's definitely worth taking some. And also shades as well, so you don't miss out on all the beautiful views. Exactly. It definitely pays to be prepared and to book your excursions in nice and early because they do fill up, especially on the Norwegian trips, because some of the excursions that you can do can be quite far away from the ship. So it just takes away some of the pain when planning them. Now, don't fear, if you do miss out, don't panic too much because there's always lots to do in the actual ports as well. But if you just want to have that little bit of extra sense of adventure, it's definitely worth doing. Something to bear in mind is seasickness. So if you're sailing from the UK, you will be going to Norway via the North Sea, and that can be very choppy. On one of our sailings, it was definitely on the choppier side, and I did experience some seasickness myself. So for me, what I'd recommend to use is ginger ale, natural, no medication required, no wristbands, but we have had some really good reviews from people who've been quite seasick, and wristbands did prove to be very effective for them, so definitely something to keep in mind. We always have them in our bag ourselves, but we've not actually felt the need to use them. Touch wood. Touch wood, yes. Be prepared that, unfortunately, due to weather conditions, sometimes cruisers do have to change the itinerary last minute. Now, it is quite rare, but going into the fjords, it can be quite difficult, especially if the North Sea is rather choppy. So, if worse comes to worse and you do miss a port, well, you know what, you're probably gonna have a really good sea day on the beautiful cruise ships that you are sailing on. Or, alternatively, sometimes cruise lines are able to get a last minute port if they're able to get into another one that's less choppy. So you might end up visiting somewhere that you otherwise might not have ever done. Something we'd definitely recommend for any sailing in Norway is every now and then taking an early night and potentially not as many drinks in the evening before, or maybe even not an alcohol package for that matter. The reason being is some of the early morning sailings or sail buys, depending on where you are, are absolutely incredible. It's what brings us back to Norway more than anything else is just the scenery. It's There's something completely magical and just really good for the soul when you're there. You just feel completely connected to nature in a way that we've not experienced before. So every now and then, particularly if you sail into Olden or Hellesilt, those sailings are absolutely stunning and you do your best to get up early in the morning. So early, in fact, that the onboard coffee shops aren't yet open. So if you fancy a coffee or need a bit of a caffeine kick to get out of bed, make a brew in your room and then just head on out. It'll keep you warm as well. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'd say around six o'clock, get up for maybe half five, six. Yeah, I think quarter to six is a good time to disembark the room on our experience. When we've done it, we've actually only ever sailed on an innie, an interior cabin. So if you have a balcony cabin, actually you can experience some of the greatest views from the luxury of your own space anyway. So just something to bear in mind about cabin upgrades too. If you're enjoying this video and you want to make our day, why not give this video a cheeky thumbs up? So when looking to book your Norwegian cruise, it's important to look at the itineraries and make sure you're going to enjoy the ports that you're going to visit. All of the ports in Norway look absolutely stunning to be honest, but some of them in particular have really big highlights. For example, Olden has the glacier, yes. Flam has the railway and so forth. And you know what, we're going to go into detail now on some of the ones that we visited so we can give you some helpful tips so you know the best excursions and things to do while you're there. So our first port of call is Olden. We absolutely love Olden, it's probably our favourite port, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just a really magical place. And you've actually got a lot to do there. So the first year we actually visited Olden, we took a paid excursion um, from directly from the cruise ship all the way up to the Brixdale Glacier. If you haven't been able to book the excursion, they do sell um, private tours outside, but just be mindful of return times to the ship if you do that. Uh, the Brixdale Glacier was an exceptionally brilliant tour for us. We really loved it. Just beautiful. As you get picked up, you get taken up um, to the cafeteria on the mountainside and then you can hike up or get the troll car for an additional fee. We chose to do the hike because we were told beforehand that elements of the movie Frozen were based on Olden and in particular the walk up to the Brixdale Glacier. And I don't know how true that is but we definitely saw what we wanted to see and got to kind of feel like we were in Frozen for a little bit. It was really cool. We really loved it. Brixdale Glacier was a massive highlight for us. It even snowed for us as well. It did, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. Another thing that you can do as an excursion, which is very popular, is the Loen Skylift. Uh, we did this last time we visited Norway and it was absolutely wonderful, wasn't it? It was, yes. And for those of you that might be a little bit scared of the thought of being essentially catapulted <laughs> up a mountain, i.e. Ben, yes. it isn't bad at all. It's very, very smooth. I think there's one bump, uh, but aside from that, it's very smooth and it's a great ride. The views are absolutely stunning. Now, when we visited, unfortunately, it was a bit cloudy and murky. At one point, we were actually in a rain cloud and we got soaked. Yeah. But all that aside, we still had a really good time and we had some absolutely beautiful glimpses of the fjords from below. So even if it is cloudy, just give it a go because you still get the experience of doing it anyway and it is absolutely wonderful. Not all excursions need to be paid for in Old and Ivo. The town itself is beautiful. One of the things that we really loved doing after we went on the low end skylift was actually just walking around and getting to experience well, low end, more so than older because that's where we were at the time, just first hand and for free. We just went through, got lost a little bit, found a waterfall that we would never have seen if we hadn't have kind of gone off the beaten track and, and found it ourselves. But in Olden itself, you've got the church, which you can walk up to and access. If it hasn't been blown away, it did one time. Oh gosh, yeah. don't say that. <laughs> Another thing you can do as well, you've got the beautiful lakes. And if you're lucky enough to visit Olden on a nice still day, you get this like mirror effect that just mirrors everything else you can see in the background. And it's hard to explain, but it's absolutely beautiful. It, yeah. it looks like a painting. It does. I think kind of Forrest Gump captures it. Don't know where heaven starts and earth ends. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so profound. Oh, we watched it Love the that. other day. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that you can do while you're in Olden is of course visit some of the shops. Just over from the ship, literally opposite, across the road, there is a massive souvenir shop with lots of things to take home for yourself, friends and family. But if you venture down the road towards where the church is, there's also a lot more shops and I think there's a couple of outlets as well. So yeah. you could get a cheeky deal while you're there as well. Exactly. I think the thing that we haven't mentioned yet as well is the pub. You read Olden my mind. Pub. Yeah. <laughs> we go there every time. Yeah, it's yeah. very sweet, it's very quaint, mm. and you can drink 
actual ale that's been made just down the road from Alden, yeah. so it's definitely worth a go. Yeah, it really truly is a local pub in the best way, very welcoming, and it's next to the ship. You Absolutely. can't miss it. The next port of call we're going to be talking about is Stavanger. It always seems to be on the list for every itinerary we see, and for good reason. It's very classically Norwegian as you sail in. The houses are just beautifully coloured, reds, blues, really vibrant. And for me, one of the best things about it, you literally get off the ship and you're in Stavanger instantly. You don't have to go anywhere, there's no taxi ride. You get off and you are there, right in the centre, actually opposite someone's house. Absolutely, and all you need to do is step off the ship, take a quick walk down the road, and you are in the thick of it. And um, one of the best things to do in Stavanger would be to have a walk around the old town. As Ben said, it's really colourful, picturesque, and it's got loads of shops, loads of restaurants, cafes, pubs. There's loads to feast your eyes on. Yes, and some beautiful bakeries that we found as well. Yeah. Really good. One of the other things you can do is explore the cathedral. It's a 12th century cathedral. We haven't done this yet ourselves, but it's definitely on our agenda for the next visit because you can hike up to the top and get some incredible panor panoramic views of Stavanger. Absolutely, and another thing that we haven't done yet, but it's definitely on our bucket list, is to go on one of the boat rides so you can go for a hike to Pulpit Rock. It sounds amazing, and it was actually used to film Mission Impossible, wasn't yeah, it? The Mission location. Mission Impossible Fallout, yes. So it's definitely worth a go, and as you can tell, we visited Stavanger a couple of times, and the fact that there's still things that we want to do exactly. just shows how much there is to do whilst yeah. you are in Norway. Yes. Bonus tip time. So one thing you have to do while you're in Stavanger is when you get off the ship, if you walk around the harbour, then you'll get the ultimate view of the cruise ship that you are sailing on. So don't forget that cruise ship selfie. Yes. So our next port of call is Horgesund. Now, to us, it's not the most picturesque port there is on most itineraries, but there is still lots to do. Yes. So once you arrive in Augustund, you either have the option to get a shuttle into the town or go for a short walk. It's about a 15 minute walk in. Yeah, 15 yeah, to maybe 20. 20. Minutes. Um, you just kind of walk off and just follow the crowd over the bridge. It's really, really simple. Just before you get to the bridge, there is a shop to the right hand side that sells some awesome chocolate. So big tip from me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Norwegian chocolate rocks. It is just better. Yeah, it kick, is. Their Kit Kats are amazing. Anyway, <laughs> um, once you've fueled up on some much needed Norwegian chocolate, you can then continue your stroll into the old town itself. It's a really pretty town. Um, when we went there before, we just got off the ship too soon and things were still closed because it was the weekend. But once you stay in for a bit longer, it does liven up and it's really beautiful actually, walking through the old town. You've got the town hall as well, which is quite an impressive building. It's just a really nice town to kind of explore and get lost in. Yeah, absolutely, and once you've done that, there are also lots of boat trips you can take as well. So, as I said, it's not the most picturesque town, but that's not meant in a bad way. It is picturesque in its own right, but just not in the same way as, say, Alden, for example. But if you want more of that, you can always take a boat trip out to see more of the fjords. Yeah. They get a lot of wildlife around that part of Norway as well, if you're lucky enough to see it, obviously, with the right times of year. And we spoke to people who did the boat trips and said they had an absolutely amazing time. If you are on a ship like Iona, or Iona in general, if you go up into the crow's nest, you do get a really beautiful shot of all the mini, mini islands around Haugesund as well. So you can definitely get in some really nice views there too. Absolutely, and if you don't go on any of the boat trips and you end up staying in Haugesund, it might be a really good time to try out some of the Norwegian cuisine as well. Obviously because Haugesund is right on the coast, they have lots of fish. So if you're into your fish cuisine, definitely be worth a go trying it while you're there. Hellesilt is a beautiful, tiny little port town in the Norwegian fjords. It's located in Grangerfjord, and oh wow, Grangerfjord is just spectacular. Stunning. Definitely make sure you get up early in the morning for that impressive sailing. It's absolutely beautiful. 
as you start to arrive, you start to hear a bit of a roar in the background. You know, what, what's that? Is it windy? What's going on? <laughs> it's the waterfall. It is absolutely stunning. And the best thing about it is, it is just a few footsteps away from the ship, pretty much as soon as you get off. Yeah. And as Ben said, it is the most beautiful waterfall. You can hear it from the ship. The sheer force and just the beauty of it is amazing. It's perfect. Exactly, and it's completely free to see it as well because it is just right there, just a few steps from the actual ship itself. One big tip though, get there nice and early if you can because it does get understandably very busy around there. So if you want the best picture or selfie or what have you, try and get there early, especially as the sun's coming up as well because it it's just magical. Yeah, when we were there it lit up the mountains and they look kind of orange and red and kind of fiery with just the waterfall in front. It was absolutely beautiful. Really, really magical experience. So when you're in the port of Hellasilt as well, one of the things you can do is hire kayaks. We didn't do this ourselves, but it's definitely something that we'd look to do next time because once you're actually in the port itself, the water from our experience was incredibly calm. So doing something like kayaking means you can get the best sea level views in a really safe space to do it as well. As safe as that kind of activity ever can be. Absolutely. And if water's not your thing, you don't fancy getting into it, why not go for a hike? There's quite a few places you can hike around Hellas Hill. There's a few different trails. Um, we tried one, unfortunately we didn't get to the end of it. It started to get a little bit treacherous. Yeah. So if you are gonna go for a hike while you're there, make sure you got some good boots and make sure you take some water and yeah. sunscreen and all those good things, just to make sure you are covered in case you get a little bit lost. Yes, like what we do. <laughs> so when you get to the waterfall, you can hike all the way up and then kind of just follow the path through. We then took the hike trail to the right hand side before the houses. Um, we were told that the hiking trail immediately in front was much easier. <laughs> yeah. So the hike to the right had beautiful moments but was actually quite tricky and at times seemed potentially dangerous with the water and the rocks. And the yeah, it, it felt like we were walking through a stream at one point. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, it was called Cohen. I believe um, so. I think it was Cohen. Yeah. So if you want the easier one, don't go Cohen. Yeah. But all that aside, it, it was really beautiful. Um, but yeah, just be prepared. Yes, definitely. Definitely take a bottle of water. Um, but that said, if we go back to sea level, one of the awesome things that you can do and that we did actually do is the rib ride through the Grand Fjord itself. That was, I think, our favorite excursion we've ever done by a country mile. Absolutely. It was so much fun. Um, our captain was just awesome, really knowledgeable as well. So you get some of the kind of local history and local culture yeah. explained to you throughout the sailing. We did get to see some Paul Puess when we were there. We did. Really, really magical moment, even though they're slightly far away, but we saw them, they were there. We did. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just a really fun experience. Not as kind of high octane, octane as you might expect, really for everyone, I'd say. Absolutely, a bit of a thrill ride, but not to the point where you're hanging on for dear life. Yes. <laughs> and our next stop is Allison's. Allison's a really, really pleasant place to visit and we were glad it was included in our first itinerary. There's lots and lots of shops and other things to do. Yes, so one of those things is the Axler Viewpoint. Probably didn't pronounce that right, but we'll have it written on screen. <laughs> um, you can access it via car or bus, but we are gluttons for punishment and chose to walk up it. There are a lot of stairs. A lot. And it was quite funny now, looking back on our videos, how out of breath we really were. They do provide plenty of benches along the way, so if you're worried about taking the stairs, there are plenty of rest stops along the way. You do get some incredible views as you climb up, so it's well worth it in our opinion. And once you're there at the very top, the viewpoint is absolutely spectacular. So worth it. Absolutely, and if you haven't seen our vlogs, pretty much everything we've talked about today is included in our playlist, so definitely check out our channel if you haven't already. And if hiking up to the top of that viewpoint wasn't enough for you, there's also some coastal hiking trails that you can take advantage of. Of course, they're free, which is nice, and you get to see the beautiful countryside that Alison has to offer. 
While you're in Alisund, you can also do lots of island hopping to the islands of Gisk and Godoy. We'll put the type in below <laughs> us because I definitely didn't say those right, but they look absolutely beautiful. We haven't done them ourselves. We've seen them from the viewpoints, but we definitely recommend that to other people who don't want to go up, who want to stay at sea level. Absolutely, and you can also go and visit the Molja Lighthouse, which is also a beautiful attraction to go and see and get a cheeky picture of. Yes. If you're traveling with children and you don't fancy going all the way up to the viewpoints or the coastal walks or things like that, there is also an aquarium, so a really good option for a family day out too. Absolutely, and as we mentioned before, as with every other port, there's lots and lots of shops and there's also restaurants, cafes and pubs, so lots to feast your eyes on. Yes, there was this one shop in particular that wasn't open when we were there. Yeah. It had, it was like an 80s retro store and it had a big ET outside and lots of like Atari stuff. We we're desperate to go in, but they, they were closed on that particular day. So if you're there and you're lucky enough to go in that store, let us know what it's like because it looked really cool. Yeah, that's one of the things I really like about Norwegian shopping, actually. I noticed there's a lot of independent stores yeah. that, of course, you do have your chain stores, but there's a lot of independents as well. And you just never know what you're going to find in them, which is really interesting. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this, why not check out our Norwegian cruise playlist? We've got so much content to show you. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comments section below and we'll come back to you as quick as we can. And while you're there, why not hit the cheeky subscribe button and ring that bell for all future videos. Ding, 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 ding.